Hey there, my name is Davis and this is LinuxAcademy.com. In this video, we'll outline the process of connecting to an EC2 instance via SSH using PuTTY on Windows. More specifically, we're looking to use the key pair that we've downloaded when we created the EC2 instance on AWS. If you've tried this before, you've probably realized that the PIM file that Amazon provides us doesn't want to work with PuTTY. Fortunately, we have an easy solution for that, and I'll show you later in the video. Before we begin, I want to point out that I'm expecting you to already have the PIM file downloaded from Amazon from when you created your EC2 instance. I've got mine here on the desktop, and you may want to put yours there too, so you can follow along right beside me. We'll begin by navigating our browsers to putty.org, P-U-T-T-Y.org. Follow the link to the downloads page. If you haven't gotten it yet, go ahead and download the putty.exe file for Windows. It's a straight executable, so you won't even need to install it. I haven't gotten it here on my machine yet, so I'll go ahead and download it to my desktop. Keep in mind that our goal is to connect using the authentication key generated by AWS when we first set up our EC2 instance. But we have that problem because PuTTY doesn't like the PIM format that the key has right now. We need to first convert it with something compatible before we can use it to connect with SSH. Thankfully, this page also provides the PuTTY Gen tool that does exactly what we're looking to do. Go ahead and download that as well. Just click on it and save it to the desktop. So now we'll use this putty gen tool to convert our PIM key from Amazon into a useful putty key that we can use here on Windows. Inside this tool, we can use the load option to load up our current key pair from Amazon. I'm wanting to import the key pair file on my desktop. I'll choose it and it's imported successfully. Now we can save the imported data and this will let us save it as a putty key that we'll be able to use. I'm going to confirm that I do not want a passcode just for this example, but you may prefer to put one in. That's probably the better option. I'll choose to save it in the same location as my old key pair file. That again is my desktop and save it as converted example key pair. Name yours appropriately. We can see that the new key was indeed saved, so we'll close the tool. Now that we have our valid key pair for PuTTY, we'll go ahead and launch PuTTY itself. I'll uncheck this box so I don't have to see this warning every time. So when we connect to SSH, we'll typically need three things. First, the host name. Second, the username that we want to connect with. And the third, in our case here, is the authentication file. We can find the host name and username that we want on the EC2 management console on AWS. I'm looking here in the connect window. And if you don't know how to pull this up, just click on the instance you want and click the connect button up top. We'll show you the information that we're looking for. First, we'll grab the machine's host name and paste it into the appropriate section of PuTTY. And then we're looking to put our username in the data section under the connection category. If you don't see that data section, you can hide or expand the categories here. So head back to EC2 Management Console, copy the desired username, and paste it here. And the last of those three steps is to add that key. If we expand SSH, we can choose the auth category here. We'll now want to point PuTTY to our converted PuTTY key file that we made just a moment ago. I'll choose that on the desktop. We can actually save the settings that we just put into PuTTY if we go back to the sessions section and save our current session. I'll give mine a fitting title. Feel free to call it whatever you'd like. Now save it and open the connection. If everything was set up correctly, you should be immediately logged into the EC2 instance. Now let me show you the benefit of saving the session like we did a moment ago. I'll go ahead and quit the SSH connection, exit PuTTY, and start all over again. So, since we saved that session, now immediately when you launch PuTTY, double-click the name you gave it, and PuTTY will log you immediately into the EC2 instance. I'm Davis Engler, and this is LinuxAcademy.com.